So I'm going to begin with a canvas. Uh, it's a, a flat canvas. It's not gallery wrap or anything, and it measures around about four by well, there you go, three and three quarters by eight inches. And I'm using the Indigo Blue Banana Custard acrylic paint. And I'm just going to randomly apply patches of this paint onto the canvas. And I'm going to do this with a variety of different colours that you can see there at the top of the screen. And this is the peppermint tea acrylic paint from Indigo Blue as well. And I'm going to repeat the same process with this colour and the other two that you can see um, just there. Well, you can just see the lids actually, you can actually see the colours yet. Or we just maybe see a little bit of the colour. So just randomly placing the paint on the canvas with no real set plan to how uh, or where I want these paints to be. So it is just purely random. And as you can see there, I'm just cleaning off the brush onto a baby wipe. I'm not even bothering to rinse the brush out in, in water. So this is the Townhouse Teal. It's one of my favourite colours from Indigo Blue. And as you can see, I'm just literally dry brushing these colours on. I'm hardly using any water at all. And this is the final colour for the canvas, which is the Wimbery Pie. As you can see, it's a rather luscious, purpley colour. And I think these four colours work really, really well together on projects. Even though you are mixing the cools with the warms, they do still really go. So that's just about done. So as you can see, it's a kind of pastel palette that I've used. And what I'm gonna do now is just bring in my heat gun and just dry that off. It doesn't take too long. And then move on to my next step. Okay, so this is one of the new releases from Indigo Blue. This is the LC rubber stamp. There is a second one called Valerie as well. And I'm using the Jet Black Archival Ink to ink up this stamp. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a different process here. And I'm going to just, in a second, stop the video and just explain why. So, and this is where I'm, before I pull it off the canvas, this is where we're gonna stop. Okay, this is my reasoning. This is my thought process behind this particular canvas. Um, canvases have quite a coarse grain to them. This particular one, you can see the grain of the canvas itself. And when you stamp onto a canvas, um, you don't always get a really, really clear impression. Now, I know this before I started, and this is what I wanted the effect to look like. Now, the reason behind this is that I wanted a kind of uneven and faded image. Now the whole point of this canvas for me is because just recently um, I've been trying to remember what my grandmother looked like and I'm having a real difficult time picturing my, picturing my grandmother in my mind. My grandmother died when I was about 12 um, and so the pictures that I have of, the, of her in my head are starting to fade. And that's the kind of effect that I wanted to try and get over in this canvas. It's how sometimes our memories start to disappear. They start to get away from us. And try as we might, we are only left with a kind of vague impression of what somebody looked like. If we don't have photographs 
to remind us on a daily basis or on a regular basis that person's face can sometimes fade and can fly away from us and that's what's happening with my grandmother um, I've asked my mother to try and find some photographs of her so that I can re-familiarise myself with how my grandmother looked um, but as of yet she hasn't been able to find any so that's what this canvas really means um, for me anyway uh, and that's the effect that I'm trying to go for. So now I have my image, I'm going to bring out my archival ink, this is the potting soil and with an ink blending tool I'm just going to use this half tone dots stencil from TCW just to add some um, earthy tones um, around the canvas just um, to add a little bit of decoration around the outside um, with you know a little bit more layering but I didn't want to add any more texture to it as in any more dimensional texture I wanted to keep the canvas pretty flat so literally all I'm doing is layering with stencils and as you can see that I've just pointed out that I have made a little bit of a mistake now that has just told me where my sentiment's going to go for this for this canvas so that's where I will be placing my quote Okay, so next up I'm bringing out the Jet Black Archival Ink and mine's pretty old now actually, I think I probably need to replace it with a newer one. And this is the Beyond Time stencil by TCW and I'm just going to use some of those scroll effects from this stencil and place those around the, um, around the, the outside just to add a little bit more depth to the canvas. And I thought, actually I quite like the bee so I thought I may just add a little hint of that in the bottom right hand corner too. Okay, so just adding that little B in the bottom right hand corner and I'm happy with the way that looks now. I just need to grunge it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring in the archival ink again. This is the potting soil again. And using the Tim Holtz chit chat, or I think this is the big chat words. I'm going to just use that archival ink and grunge up the edges of these little word stickers. Now I did try and find, find the words uh, memories fade but unfortunately that word isn't in this collection. So I've gone for the next best thing and seeing as the stencil was called Beyond Time and Time Flies and so do memories after a while, I've decided to put in the word flies. So this is what I'm using, the big chat word stickers and I'm looking for the word either fade or flies at this, stand, at this point. And because I can't find it, I will just stick to the word fly. Because these stickers are self-adhesive, I'm not going to put any more glue on top of it because later on I may actually change the sentiment and actually stamp it out properly so it does say memories fade. So I'm going to leave them as they are because I can easily remove them if I want to later. So as you can see, I'm just going around the outside borders of the canvas with that um, archival link and I'm just grunging up the outside border of it just to try and um, just to age it a little bit I suppose. So I'm just adding a little bit more texture to it, a little bit more of an aged effect. So that's pretty much it for the canvas itself. Now this canvas comes with a frame. So there is a silver frame that goes with it and the canvas sits within it there. But I don't particularly like the silver. I know it does go because it's got that black background um, like the black insert, but I wanted to make something a little bit more sympathetic. I wanted something a bit more in keeping with the colour. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to um, distress the frame itself and I'm going to paint it, first of all with the white gesso. So I'm sticking to indigo blue this time. And I'm going to give the, the, the frame uh, just a thin wash 
of the gesso. Now I'm not too bothered if some of the silver still shows through. That's fine with me. Um, but I just wanted to tone the actual um, silver down a little bit. And then when that is dry, which takes very, very little time whatsoever, I will add some more color to it. So just jump to the end of that and then bringing back out the Indigo Blue Wimberry Pie. And again, I'm just going to mix a little bit of the leftover gesso with the Wimberry Pie and just dry brush the, uh, the actual purple paint mixed with the gesso around the canvas. So this is going to bring in some of those colors from the actual canvas itself onto the frame. And then when I'm happy that I've got the paint all the way around, including the sides, again, just dry brushing, not putting it on thick, allowing the colors of the silver to show through and the white to show through in some places. Um, I'm going to bring out the archival ink and I'm going to just give that a final sort of grunge aged um, coating over the top. So as you can see, I'm just starting by pouncing the blending tool just around the corners first of all and along the edges just to dirty up that frame a little bit more. Uh, it is quite effective actually using the uh, the potting soil. It is a nice sort of darkish brown colour and I think this is probably the closest you'll get in the archival inks that matches the vintage photo in the distress ink which is obviously water based. Um, the tea dye, or not the tea dye, the sepia one in the archival ink is the next one that I would probably have used um, but I think the potting soil ink is, is, is better. It's more of an, an aged effect whereas the sepia one is a little bit too orangey for my liking. So I'm happy with the aged effect on the outside of the frame. Now you can still see some of that silver showing through. You can still see some of the whites. So yeah, I think that works pretty well. So all I need to do now is just to add a little bit of glue onto the corners of the, um, the canvas and stick that in place. And then we're done. And that is my um, Memories Fly or Memories Fade canvas and there you can see that effect of the image kind of disappearing into the background. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me. I'll see you all again real soon. Bye for now.